Let's look at the answer to Weekly Math Challenge 28. And I want to say a huge congratulations to Fake Account, who was the very first person to correctly answer this question with the answer of 7 over 20. So now let's examine why. The answer to this question is 7 over 20. So we have 5 cards labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and it's arranged in a vertical stack of random order interesting and we are going to repeat this following procedure 2018 times and the procedure is if the top card is even if the top card is two or four then that card is removed from the stack and if the top card is odd then we are going to move the top card to the bottom of the stack and we're going to repeat this n times where n is that odd number so for example let's say let's say the vertical stack was in the order one two three four five so one was at the top and five was the bottom card then what is going to happen well we're going to look at one and we're going to say one has to be the top card is going to be moved to the bottom once so we are going to move one to the bottom and now we're going to examine two and for 2, since that's even, you're going to throw it away. Now we're going to examine 3. Now for 3, we're going to skip this card. You're going to put it to the bottom of the stack 3 times. So this 3 is going to be skipped. 4 is going to be skipped. 5 is going to be skipped. Then now we're back to 1. And for 1, you're going to skip one card or move one card to the bottom. So we are basically skipping this card. And then we're going to go right back to 3 because 2 is gone. And once again, from 3, we're going to go back to 1 and 1 to 3 and so on. So as you can see, there is an infinite cycle here. Infinite cycle in this case of going to 1, then going to 3, then going right back to 1. So in this case, we have what we want. Only one number, only one even number, I should say. Only one even number is taken out. 4 is going to be always in this stack because of this infinite cycle 1 and 3 that's going to skip over 4. And obviously, since this infinite cycle has to occur soon enough because as soon as one even number goes away, we have to go into this infinite cycle and it shouldn't take too long to erase that even number because we're not going to have infinite cycle to begin with. You're going to have some, some odd number or start with even number and go to some even number and take it out and then we have to go into infinite cycle. So there's only a few cards that we're going to have to go through before entering the cycle and that's telling us that this 2018 is way, way more than enough. In fact, this thing can be infinitely many times infinitely many times and the answer to this question is not going to change because this because this infinite cycle is going to start very very quickly within a few cards so we are, since we know that we basically want to find we basically want to find a number of sequence number of the these random sequences number of random sequences of the five cards that's going to go into infinite cycle infinite cycle right after one even is removed. So we want the sequence to be such that after one even is removed, we go into this infinite cycle of odd numbers. Odd numbers. So let's think about this before we really go down to casework. Let's think about this. When one even card is removed, we are only going to have four cards left. In this case, what is five going to do? In this case, well, five is going to mean we are skipping five cards or we are putting five to the bottom five times, but it's easier to think of it as skipping the card. So we're going to skip five cards. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to examine this card. So these red arrows are the card we skip because of five. So basically, five and one have the same effect. So one and five are the same already basically the same thing of skipping one card going right over to the next card where after one even is removed after one even is removed and keeping this in mind is going to make it easier for us to quickly go down to casework 
So now actually, let's actually do the casework. Now there's two ways of doing it. You can do the casework directly or finding all the combinations, all the all the sequences in which one even number is taken out. Or you can do it using complement. You can do it by counting the sequences where zero evens are removed, zero evens are removed, or two evens are removed. Removed, and you can take this away from the total to get your final answer. And in fact, in this case, in my opinion, counting this directly is just as easy, if not easier, than counting the complement. So we are going to do it by doing it directly. But I encourage you guys to also try out counting by complement after watching this video if you want to learn more about this or just practice more counting. Anyway, now let's think about how to do this directly. So we have five, we have five cards, and realize if we start with five on top, it's over. There's no way. There's no way we're going to get one even removed because the cycle, infinite cycle, is going to start right away. Because as soon as we have this five, you're skipping five cards, one, two, three, four, five, and you're right back, you're right back to where you started out with, and the cycle is going to repeat and repeat and repeat. So as soon as we have five for the first one, that's not going to work. So the first card cannot be five. So how about when the first card is 1, when the first card is 1, one way of getting 1 even removed, so we are trying to see the sequences where 1 even number is removed, exactly 1. So we can have even number right after that, so E is going to be even number, it can be 2 or 4. So we can have 1 E, then we can have 3. Then we can have 3, because once this even is taken out after 1, we can have this infinite, infinite cycle, skipping this 3, going right back to 1, and then 1 is going to take us to 3, then 3 is going to take us back to 1, and we have this infinite cycle, so this is one way. How about the other ways? So that's one way. The other way is we can have 1, then even can be taken out, then we can have 5, and remember, once 1 even is taken out, 1 and 5 have the same effect. So after 5, you're going to go to this card. And this card can be 3. And 3 is going to take us 1, 2, 3, right back to 5. Remember, this even is taken out. And we have this infinite cycle once again. So that's another case. What's the other case? We can start with 1. Instead of starting with even, we can have 3. Realize that if we have 5, that's not going to work because you're going to have this infinite cycle of going right back to 5 infinitely many times. So 5 isn't going to work, but 3 should work. So we can have 1, 3, then even gets taken out, then you can have this infinite cycle of 1 and 3. So that's another way. Let's continue. So we have looked at all of the cases starting with 1. Now let's look at case starting with 3. So we can have 3, then even can be taken out. And we can have this infinite cycle of 1 and 3. Then, Or we can have 3 and even can be taken out. Or we can have 5 because 1 and 5 have the same effect in this case. And we are going to have another way. is We can have 3, then we can have 1. And then even can be taken out. And we are going to cycle through 1 and 3 infinitely many times. Or we can start with some even number. That's always the case. So we can start with some even number, and you can have 1 following it. Then we can have 3 and have this infinite sequence. Or we can start with even, go to 1, and have 5, then 3. Because 5 has the same effect as 1, once this even is taken out, and you can have this infinite, infinite cycle. Or we can start with, instead of E1, we can start with even and 3. In this case, we have to, we can go to 1, that's one way to have the cycle, or we can go to even, then 3, then go to 5 and have the cycle, or, or we can then start with even, then 5, 5 is going to have same effect as 1, and then we can have 3 to have infinite cycle, or we can have even, then 5, then 1 and 3 and have this infinite cycle, and it seems like we have counted all the case. We have counted all the cases starting with 1, and then broke it apart to the second number being even or 3. And we have counted the case starting with 3 and even, and case starting with 5 is not going to work. 
So now let's just now let's count how many how many permutations correspond to each of them, and we can just add them up. For this one, how many sequences satisfy this this condition? Well, there's two ways of picking what even number goes there. And once even number is picked, there's two ways of arranging the two leftover numbers. For example, if we pick 2, there's two ways of arranging 4 and 5, 5 4, 5, or 5, 4. So there's two numbers to pick this even, two ways of picking this even, and two ways of arranging the two leftovers. So there's four cases for this one. And for this one, we, there's two ways of picking the even, and the leftover has to go there. So that's 2 times 1 or 2. For this one, two ways of picking the even, two ways of arranging the leftover, that's 4. For this one, that's 2, that's another 2, so that's 4. Same for this one. And for this one, it's 4 again. For this one, it's 4 again. And for this one, it's 2. For this one, it's 4. For this one, it's 4. For this one, it's 4. And for the last one, it is 2. So now all we have to do is we have to add them up. So let's add these up and we are done. 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. That's what, 18? So we have 18 so far. And for this one, 8, 10, 14, 18, 20 to 24, down below. So 18 and 24 combined give, give us a grand total of 42. So we know there are 42 combinations that satisfy our constraint of having only one even number removed. So we know there's 42, 42, so that should be the top of our fraction. 42, and we want to find the probability of having this arrangement. So the answer is going to be 42 over the total number of arrangements, which is 42 over 5 factorial, because we are arranging 5 things in a line, or 42 over 5 factorial is 120. We can simply divide this by 6 and get 7 over 20 as our final answer.